I'm trying to take down a guy of this size. Daryl is six foot five, 280 pounds of American steel and sex appeal. So if you're trying to take a guy down of this size, it's extremely difficult to get a hold of the leg and drag him to the ground. The last thing I want to do is take a shot, have a sloppy entry, or even a good entry, and they get a decent sprawl on you, and then you are stuck underneath with a huge weight deficit, fighting off your hands and knees. You're carrying all of your weight, all of his weight, and he's carrying none. So the easiest way to take down somebody of this size is to use their weight and their pressure against them in a sort of duck under boot scoop motion, okay? So step one, I'm gonna take my head and plant it right into his shoulder. Let's go ahead and switch sides. I'm gonna plant my head right into his shoulder. Nine times out of 10, he's gonna grab a collar tie. All I'm gonna do is wrap my fingers, thumb outside, right here on this elbow. I'm not gonna do anything with this. I'm not getting any tension. I'm not locking it in. I'm just placing it there. A lot of this move is just lulling them into a sense of false security, okay? So I push my head into the shoulder, grab the elbow, and then the hardest part of this move is holding on to this big, strong arm, okay? So I generally don't wanna do a ton of hand fighting with big guys. I like to reach, fake, get their hands moving so I can swing around do a swing single, get to the back for you experienced wrestlers. But inexperienced wrestlers, inexperienced grapplers on the feet, very, very hard again to do a leg attack, take them down. So the only engagement I wanna do is grab an inside tie on this wrist. I'm going to glue the rope to the end of the stick and I'm gonna go loose, okay? I'm gonna go loose. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna go really, really loose. I don't want him to think I'm doing anything here. So I'm not tugging on this, I'm not yanking, I don't want any tension, because I don't wanna give him anything to react to. I don't want him yanking back on this. I don't want him suspicious at all. So I grab the wrist, and I might even shake it just a little bit, just a subconsciously very, very slight motion, just to make him feel like this is relaxed. He doesn't need to be scared here, everything's fine, everything's gonna be okay. So after my head goes into the pocket, I grab the elbow, grab this wrist. If he tries to post, all I have to do is hand up, then dive my fingers over top. Now I've got his wrist. I push into Daryl, push into your opponent just a little bit. As he pushes back, my hand that's on the wrist, post to the mat. My same side leg sits out to the side. I touch my butt just for a second, and then I shrug the elbow off, turn, in cover, okay? If you can do a sit out, you can do this move. So what do I mean by a sit out? Real fast, if I'm gonna quad pod, diagonal motion, right leg sits under left arm, leg comes back the way it came, opposite motion. If you can do this, you can do this move. The easier and faster you can do your sit out, the easier this boot scoop is going to be. The only thing I need from my opponent is pressure. If you don't have pressure in this position, you're not hitting this move. Push him with your head. As soon as they push back, you don't need him running across the mat at you. If you do, even better. The more pressure, the better. But all you need is a tiny, tiny bit. When you push into your opponent, they almost always are gonna push back, okay? So I lock into this position and I'm not going crazy, okay? I'm not trying to generate any kind of suspicion. Very relaxed. Very relaxed, I get, I get nice and low. I start leaning in, as soon as, they, as soon as they push back, sit to your butt, throw that elbow, turn and cover. And when you sit, you wanna get as close to their side as possible, okay? I'm not penetrating in when I hit this move, right? If I were to hit this just in motion, just facing, let's say like a two foot gap away from my opponent, it would look like this, okay? I'm not posting my hand and trying to boot scoot, penetrating into him. I'm boot scooting in place, okay? So if we were doing a different angle here to camera, I'm pushing in nice and slow. I'm gonna post, pretend there's a line right here, right in between our legs. I post right on the line, I sit outside of it, and then this elbow, all I do is a tiny little shuck. It's not a big exaggerated, Ugh, like this, right? I'm not giving him any momentum to take me to my back. I just flick it and roll my shoulders. Uh, I roll my shoulders and flick at the end of that roll, turn and cover, right? I bypass having to deal with any of his weight, any of his strength. 
and I want to sit one more time as close. Just try it this way. I want to sit as close to his side as possible. Okay, when I sit, I want him to fall right on the outside of my shoulder. Right here. So I'm sitting just on the outside line here. So I have a very short distance to cover back. Okay. Do it once. Facing here. Move back up just a little bit. There we go. So I push in, he pushes back. Right to the back. The worst case scenario here. Worst case scenario, if you hit this move correctly and you sit to the outside and you do not penetrate in, worst case scenario, you hip heist back into your stance, you're back in the neutral position facing. And that's what I love about this move. There's very little downside if you don't get it. The downside of the single leg or any shot, if you don't get it, is you're stuck underneath, dealing from a, working from a deficit. Here, if your opponent relieves the pressure right as you're about to hit this move, say you push into them, and then right as you hit this move, they pull back and relieve that pressure. Now there's no reason for them to topple over, over you. You hip heist back underneath and go back to facing them. So we're here pushing in and he relieves the pressure. We're right back in and facing. Slow motion. Here I'm pushing in. He relieves pressure. And then I hip heist back. Back into facing. You're back up. Because the main thing, guys, you're going to want to penetrate underneath him. All of your takedowns up until this point involve you penetrating to the hips. This is the one where you do not want to do that. You want to plant your hand in place and sit in place just off center line. You can drill this move on your own. You don't even really need a partner. Just grab the wrist, head into the pocket, grab the elbow, thumb outside, grab the wrist, push in, plant the hand, sit and flick. One more thing from here. As you're turning and covering, I just want to give you one really good hand placement when you're turning and taking the back. Instead of just going for a body lock, as soon as I hit this move, I turn, I hit it successfully. As I turn to cover, take your far hand, let's reach back a little bit. Take your far hand and extend it down onto their thigh. It's, a, it's called a thigh pry, okay? So this hand, is snaking down the inside of the thigh, and then I'm gonna hug off the side of him here, okay? Like a little cannonball, a little dead weight off to the side. I straighten this arm that keeps a lot of weight forward on his hands. You can go half, claw ride, and you can even grab the wrist, pull it up into your pocket, and sit here, okay? It keeps them from grabbing, pulling guard, sitting out. It just locks their hips in place, okay? And hug his near side thigh, okay? So I like to take my legs if invisible pressure. If Daryl wasn't here, you'd see that my, my knees are pinching this near side thigh, okay? So I pinch the near side thigh here, and then I sag my weight over onto the opposite side of my thigh pry, okay? This just locks everything into place. You can go half Nelson. You can't roll from here if he tries to grab me. You can go then collect the wrist, pull it up into your pocket. Now he's really not going anywhere, right? Or if you have long arms, you can claw ride and then suck it in, pull the claw right towards you. There is this torquing motion with the thigh pry where I'm extending it out and then hanging off the opposite side, right? It just locks everything in place very nicely. And the reason I say it is the easiest takedown against a larger opponent is because it takes the least amount of energy. And if you are unsuccessful in your execution, it has the least amount of downside. Taking down bigger guys in general, right, is incredibly difficult, okay? Incredibly difficult, no matter what, all right? So this move makes it as accessible and easy as possible, but it is not versatile. It's it's incredibly dependent upon 
one single setup with your head in the nook of their shoulder having an outside elbow grip and the wrist grip with your fingers inside. This is the only setup you can use to hit this move. There's, you're not hitting this move anywhere else. So when you get back into this position, if your partner's any good at all and you've already hit this on them, they're gonna recognize this is coming, disengage, and then work back in with a different tie, okay? So when you do get this takedown, use it wisely, and when you do get it, make sure you keep them down. Oh, and by the way, this is the first video in a long series on how to take down a larger opponent. For the foreseeable future, every video that's going to be coming out will be on how to take down a larger opponent. And every technique that I show you not only will work on a larger opponent, but a same size and smaller opponent as well. In the spirit of BJJ, I wanted to look at wrestling from a BJJ perspective. BJJ being a martial art that takes uh, leverage and technique to overcome a bigger, stronger attacker. And I wanted to make anyone who's watching this, I want to make your time and your practice time as effective and meaningful as possible. So I'm not going to be showing you fancy throws or things like that. I mean, I might throw some of those out there eventually just for fun. Um, but you saw the size difference between me and Daryl. Like you're just, you're, you're not going to be throwing that guy. Okay. Uh, so if you're going to be drilling takedowns, they should work on bigger, same size, and smaller opponents just to make your, your arsenal as effective and useful as possible, okay? And if you just watch these videos week after week, each one is going to build on the next. And by the end of it, you're going to be a much much better grappler on your feet, okay? You're gonna be that guy or girl at the beginning of class when you do that 10 to 20 minutes of takedowns that actually knows what they're doing, all right? So, really, really excited about this series. I put a lot of hard work into it and I'm so excited for you guys to see it. I'll see you next time.